from penguin spotting in Antarctica, whale watching in Alaska, or witnessing orangutans in Borneo. A cruise is a great way to get up close and personal with Mother Nature. Which is why this week on Planet Cruise Weekly, we're exploring the best cruises for nature lovers. Hello and welcome to episode 60 of Planet Cruise Weekly, the cruise bay show where each week we look at different news, issues and developments within the cruise industry. I'm Keith, I'm an ex-cruise director, I've got about 20 years experience in the industry both on ship and off and each week I'm joined by a different guest and I'm very happy to welcome a first to the Planet Cruise Weekly sofa, although it's not a sofa, it's more a couple of stools and an odd table, and that's uh, our wonderful host of the weekly cruise news episodes that you may well have seen on our channel, and if you haven't, pop back or make sure you look for them. It's Paul. How are you, Paul? Oh, I'm good, thanks, Keith. Now, you're a keen you're a keen nature lover, right? I am a keen nature lover. Yeah. yeah, I live in the middle of the New Forest, so I can't help but be surrounded by nature. Well, over the past decade, the popularity of cruising as a means to travel in comfort, style and ease has been rocketing. Many people use it as a means to chase the sunshine, to dip their toe into a new culture, or indulge in big city exploration. But more recently, growing numbers of wildlife and nature fans, such as Paul here, are realising that cruising could work for them too. A cruise offers you a way to discover some of nature's greatest wonders by day and then relax at the bar on board by night. Now what's important is to choose the style of cruise you want. Some ships will offer travellers a packed schedule of daily zodiac landings, hikes, snorkelling or kayaking, while others will focus more on gentle bus-led tours. Now for those who want a more adventurous style of cruise, expedition ships offer flexible itineraries to follow the wildlife and because of their smaller size they can meander through places the bigger ships can't, meaning passengers get even closer to the wildlife. Expedition cruises also allow budding explorers to experience a dose of adventure without having to sacrifice all the mod cons. Those who prefer a more conventional cruise with time to explore on shore can pick a huge choice of packages offering a combination of cruise and land tours. So passengers can visit places like Alaska's Denali National Park, or go on an African safari, or explore some of the world's best national parks during their voyage, whilst having a bigger ship experience with all the luxuries of multiple dining venues and a broad selection of West End style evening entertainment. So let's now look at some of the best areas you can explore on a cruise ship that will throw you headfirst into the wonderful world of Mother Nature. So we're starting with South America, which is being hailed by some as the new Alaska. Miles of rugged natural beauty, breathtaking mountain peaks, fjords that stretch nearly forever, cosmopolitan cities, indigenous historic peoples and cultures, and vast tropical rainforests. It's a huge continent. It covers 14 countries over thousands of miles and extends from the equatorial tropics through to the sub-Antarctic. Now, there are two main choices here, and the first is Birdwatcher's Paradise, with a cruise around Cape Horn to the Falkland Islands. Highlights include the breeding grounds of the black-browed albatross and a diverse selection of penguins, including rockhoppers, regal king, magellic, and macaroni penguins. There's also a lot of choice when sailing around the Horn, but the main contenders here are Holland America and Princess. They give you the more mainstream experience, and then Hurtigruten for the more expedition type experience. And cruises tend to take between 12 to 21 days. Now the other main option might surprise you, as you'll no doubt be expecting us to say the Amazon. Now if you want to find out more about cruising the Amazon, then if you click the link that Keith's going to point to, you can watch episode 15 of Planet Cruise Weekly, where we looked at expedition cruising. But today, we want to mention Costa Rica the adventure and eco-capsule of South America, which offers visitors an array of lush jungles, tranquil beaches and misty waterfalls. This relatively small Central American country contains an extremely wide range of environments, including tropical rainforests, Atlantic and Pacific coastline, volcanoes and cloud forests that are over 300 years old, and a lot more. Now, sailing to Costa Rica is possible within many of the main company's itineraries, and it, these do tend to be included in mainly the Caribbean itineraries that they offer. But for a more in-depth visit, we do recommend Princess Cruises uh, for uh, more of an expedition style cruise, maybe try Windstar. Now it's definitely worth noting that some cruises are available where you can explore South America and the Antarctic. For instance, Celebrity offer a 20 night cruise and stay to Monte Deveo, which includes a two night hotel stay at Iguazu Falls. Now you also get a tour thrown in as well, and you also get a two night hotel stay in Buenos Aires. 
Now situated in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, 605 miles off the west coast of South America, are the Ecuadorian Galapagos Islands. They're known as the place that inspired Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, and they're absolutely amazing. There's, there's 13 in total, and they give year-round great weather. And you're gonna witness a variety of animals in their untouched natural habitat, including sea lions, penguins, swimming iguanas, pelicans, flamingos, and even, if you're lucky, get up and close and personal with the island's most famous resident, which is the giant tortoise. Now, for more active inclined travellers, uh, you'll get a chance to maybe get into the water by snorkel or scuba, and there you'll experience the largest concentration of whales and dolphins in the world. It's one of the few places I've not yet had a chance to go to, but I'm desperate to dive at. Now, not many companies currently cruise the Galapagos, so your choice is quite limited. It's either Silver Seas Cruises, or the main player, which is Celebrity Cruises, and they've actually got three ships that are based there all year, and they anchor at two or three islands each day. So you can go on shore and experience the diversity in wildlife and scenery. Now, whichever company you choose, all of the ships offer a more expedition-style cruise because of the very nature of the destination. You can't discuss wildlife and nature cruises without thinking, of course, of Africa. It's home to some of the world's most iconic animals, and you'll be hard pushed to find anyone that wouldn't relish the chance to see one of the big five, the lion, the rhino, the leopard, the buffalo, and the elephant. Africa has a ring of prime ports that help cruisers discover this exciting continent. There's 54 very diverse countries, and you're gonna have the chance to visit the meccas of Kenya, Tanzania, Madagascar, Mozambique, Nambia, and of course, South Africa. Now, safari excursions will take you as close as possible to some of the most infamous predators on Earth, and you'll have the opportunity to marvel at the two tallest mountains on the continent, Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. Now, from Cape Town, you can also visit Boulders Beach to see the African penguin colony there. In Gambia, there are nature reserves near Banjul with monkeys, hyenas, and hippos, while pelicans and flamingos live in the lagoons near Namibia's Wolvis Bay. The highlight of any Africa cruise has to be the island of Madagascar, where over 90% of the island's animals and plants are found nowhere else on Earth. It's the world's fourth largest island, and it boasts an extremely diverse selection of landscapes, including plains, mountains, coasts, and dense forest. Now, the star of the island is undoubtedly the instantly recognizable ringtail lima, but with such a concentration of wildlife, you'll be spoilt for choice as you spot tropical birds, reptiles, countless variations of lemurs, chameleons, and of course, the cat-like fossil. Now, when it comes to cruising Africa, you're actually spoiled for choice. But surprisingly, Fred Olsen and MSC offer a good selection and are definitely worth looking at. Next up, Alaska. It's known for dramatic landscapes, icy glaciers, and of course it boasts Mount McKinley, the highest peak in North America. Glaciers larger than countries. Yeah, process that. And the biggest national park in the US. Now, brown bears, moose, musk oxen, lynx, and short-tailed wildcats plus grey wolves are just some of the animals that roam this completely wild region. Whilst on the water, there's incredible opportunities for whale watching with orcas, killer whales, and pods of dolphins, a really common sight. Now, one of the advantages of Alaska as a destination is that a lot of the wildlife can actually be seen and enjoyed from the deck of the ship, which is ideal for those who have limited mobility. As to who goes there, well, both Princess and Honda America offer the best selection of cruises in Alaska, while companies like Oceania, Disney, Celebrity and Carnival also visit occasionally, and luxury lines like Seven Seas and Silver Sea offer a smaller ship, more exclusive Alaskan experience. Now, stretching across the North Pole, the Arctic encompasses the northern regions of Norway, Sweden, Greenland, Finland, Iceland, Canada, Russia and the US. Alaska. Now it's accounting for 6% of the Earth's surface and this vast area is home to a rich array of wildlife. Now summer in the Arctic starts with the midnight sun months of May and June when the ice melts sufficiently for the ships to sail to the far north. Norway's Svalbard is known for its polar bears and you'll also see walrus and seals there too. Whilst a trip to Greenland may also bring sightings of polar bears, musk ox, arctic fox and hares. Iceland has fewer wild animals, but it's really good for whale watching, in particular mink, humpback, and fin whales. Now, Fred Olsen offer regular trips up here with their popular midnight sun cruises, while Silver Seas and Hurtigluten also have a really good constant presence. We always like to throw in a few surprises, and this will be one of those, because it's not an obvious wildlife destination. But in fact, it has some spectacular countryside and amazing national parks, and we're talking, of course, about Japan. In the marches of Kushiro, you can see the red-necked cranes that are the emblem of Japan, 
plus Hadiko deer and the white-tailed sea eagles. Several varieties of whales also swim off what's called the Sheratoko Peninsula and the National Park on the peninsula has one of the biggest populations of brown bears in the world. While many of the big companies, world cruises such as Cunard and P&O, will visit Japan, it's Princess who currently offer the best selection of dedicated Japanese explorer cruises. While Celebrity and Royal Caribbean have some great cruises that combine Japan with other parts of Asia. The final area we're going to discuss today lies between the South Pacific and the Indian Oceans. Australasia is extraordinarily diverse in terms of its geography, wildlife and climate with deserts, mountains and rainforests and of course it's home to some of the quirkiest creatures in the animal kingdom. The obvious must-sees are the iconic kangaroos and of course you get a chance maybe to cuddle a koala. Done that. You've done that. Oh, yes. They're great cuddlers aren't they? They are great They're cuddlers. Really so good. Soft. They're really good. They're very good at spooning. And uh, you can also see Tasmanian devils, emus and of course the famous duck-billed platypus. Australia is also home to the largest coral reef in the world and therefore home to incredible marine life. There's 1,500 plus species of fish that live there, as well as sea turtles, whales, dolphins, sharks, stingrays and more. Again, all the main companies, including Norwegian and Cunard, explore this part of the world. But the main player here is P&O Australia, who have a dedicated fleet of five ships that tour Australasia all year round. We've included also the Caribbean, which again may surprise some of you, but some of the less developed islands are real havens to some truly wonderful wildlife. Antigua and Barbuda are home to many unique breeds, including the red-footed booby, the endangered West Indian whistling duck, the Barbuda warbler, and the magnificent frigate bird. Sea turtles are also found on many Caribbean islands, and in fact, you can even witness them coming out the sea and nesting, which is incredibly amazing on a moonlit night. While scuba diving and snorkeling fans can marvel at the colorful fish that live on the coral reefs around many islands, my favorite there being St. Lucia. Now, my favorite here is the island of Dominica. And I think it's because I'm a film buff, because the Pirates of the Caribbean films mm -hmm. are filmed here. But it is a true nature lover's paradise. Now, you have your pick of companies here with the US line sailing year-round from their home ports and the UK and European companies positioning a ship here in the islands over the winter. Now, certain cruise lines have begun to offer not just the opportunity to explore the natural world through their destinations, but have also embraced new partnerships with some of the world's leading conservation and exploration societies. In 2015, Holland America embarked upon a fun and fact-fueled partnership with the BBC. Highlights of this nature-focused partnership include a live concert based on BBC Earth's Frozen Planet programme, a game show themed all about the natural world, special BBC Earth theatre screenings and children's workshops and shows all about animals and dinosaurs. Holland America are also offering select BBC Earth branded cruises and with these they'll bring on producers and creative team members who are behind the BBC Earth programming and they'll do special lectures, classes and film workshops on board. In 2016, Royal Caribbean entered into a five-year partnership with the World Wildlife Fund that's now represented across the trio of its cruise lines including both Celebrity and Azamara. Now they've donated five million dollars to the charity and have committed to support ocean conservation via a set of sustainability targets meant to decrease their environmental footprint. Now these include emission reductions and educating guests about ocean conservation and how they can act to help protect the world's oceans. Now as part of this partnership, more green-minded shore excursions are being offered on board. Uh, menus are highlighting sustainably sourced seafood and in cabin there are magazines outlining the work of the WWF and a dedicated WWF channel on the stateroom TVs. Plus, Azamara will host an onboard World Wildlife Fund guest speaker series featuring expert lectures discussing all the facets of the natural world. And hot off the press for 2017, guests aboard select Paul Gagoyne cruises sailing in the South Pacific will benefit from the line's new partnership with the Wildlife Conservation Society. The edutainment approach will include two new programs, a wildlife discovery series with scientists, oceanographers and conservationists presenting lectures on marine life and their habitats and the stewards of nature which is geared towards kids and their families with hands-on educational programming led by naturalists. So there we go, hopefully that's given you a little bit more of an idea of the different options you've got if you do want to explore the natural world and really get to grips with Mother Nature via a cruise ship. Loads and loads of choice and again if you've got any questions at all, click the link above and it will take you through to one of our team who will be happy to help. 
Now, we want to do a few thank yous to people that got in touch over the past week. So a big thank you, first of all, to Steve Roth. Uh, he said, great video. This is about our Norwegian Cruise Lines Planet Cruise Weekly Special. He said, I've sailed Norwegian Cruise Lines each of the last two years and have fallen in love with them as a cruise line. The food, the entertainment, and most importantly, the services are all superb. So Steve, we agree with you. They do a great job and it's lovely that you got in touch to let us know. Thank you very much. And then finally, Debbie Stones, who uh, commented under one of our deals of the week, which is all about Norwegian uh, Epic. She said, 60 days in counting until I'm on Norwegian Epic. Yippee! So uh, we share your excitement, although we're a little bit jealous, Debbie, but uh, do let us know how your cruise went and get back in touch. Now, of course, if Debbie wants to get back in touch with us or anyone else wants to get in touch, Paul, what do they do? Well, you can email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk. You can, of course, check us out on Facebook, check us out on Twitter as well. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube for all the latest updates and all the latest videos we post. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for watching. Do get in touch. Let us know what you want to hear us cover in future episodes. It's very, very important to us and we do love your feedback. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you soon.